following up on a GPS cluster of female leopard branding, she discovered a warthog carcass and placed one of Mr. Cliff Sanders' camera traps there, the landowner of that property. could be confirmed that she managed to kill a warthog, suggesting a degree of recovery from her hospital ordeal. The wound scar seems to have healed, as it is not easily discernible. The landowner of this property has conserved the leopard population in the area for a number of years and has supported the project, in particular checking on kill sites for us every now and again. Since a major objective of post-release monitoring of female leopard branding was to examine reproductive behaviour, via a desktop approach we scrutinised her locational fixes on her downloaded satellite maps. We were confident in our prediction of potential den sites and plan to ground truth these identified sites. Since she used rugged areas away from roads, we leapfrogged into denning areas via helicopter, courtesy of Mr. Toki Buertis of Flying for Freedom SA, who has helped us ever since the start of this saga with this leopard. The plan was to place camera traps on video at suspected den sites and this was obviously done when the mother was absent and this was determined via radio telemetry. To minimize excessive disturbance, work was done as quickly as possible to clear the area of leaf litter debris and place the camera traps. It was truly exciting to capture these first clips of the first cubs of this female leopard exactly two months after a re-release back into the wild. Longer term, as in the midterm, say six months to a year, is also important when it comes to post-release monitoring of recovering leopards. Here we assisted with GPS kill cluster predictions to support the local management of a ranch in the Machalisburg. In this, Mr. Graham Murray, the then manager of Ray Krantz, set up his own camera traps at one of female leopard Brandy's kill sites, with the hope in mind 
to obtain a status update on her cubs. She is so far without her cubs and is being harassed by a local antelope species, the kudu. Leopard can be curious, though we have found them to quickly accept the presence of camera traps. Finally, we have evidence of at least one of the cubs being summoned into feed from the leopardess, and they would be about four months at this stage. then soon to be joined by a second cub, and there's a general intolerance toward one another. It can be concluded that of the three cubs this leopardess had during pregnancy, it seems only two of these had survived until this point, which is not unusual at all. 